Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Dragalia Lost video. Today we're going to be going over Tiki, because we finally have info for her. her. Her summon banner should be at reset, and I'll be planning on summoning her because she's the last Fire Emblem unit that I don't have. Uh, so I'm going to talk about her, go over what she does, maybe try and explain it in case you're a little bit confused. Uh, I definitely was at the beginning, and then Lerp explained it to me, and I was like, okay, that's interesting. Um... That's going to be today's video, so as always, remember, if you end up liking the video, leave a thumbs up, comment about what you feel about her, if you're going to go deep for her, mm, if you're going to go crazy summoning for her, <laughs> uh, chose to change my phrasing on it, or if you're planning on now going back deeper into part one and going more for Krom or Piona. I know some people were definitely like, I want to see what, what Tiki does before I go summon crazy, so tell me what you're going to do, what the plan is, so... Let's go Tiki. Hi, I'm Tiki. I'd love to play with you all. Um, she's British in this game. I don't understand why English makes Tiki British when Marth isn't British, but whatever. Um, I was going to do a British accent, decided against it. The Dragon Scion, she has a naive personality and a childish appearance that belies her great strength and was placed in eternal slumber as a result. When she must protect what matters, she unleashes her might to fight in dragon form. Divine Wings deals water damage to surrounding enemies and raises the Divine Dragon Gauge if the attack connects. If this skill is used when Divine Dragon form, a variant called Breath of Fog will be used instead. Breath of Fog deals water damage to the enemies directly ahead and inflicts frostbite. Dragon Valor partially fills the user's Divine Dragon Gauge if this skill is used when in Divine Dragon form, a variant called Divine Dragon Blow will be used instead. Divine Dragon Blow deals water damage to the target and nearby enemies and deals extra damage to the frostbitten foes. Co-op ability, standard attack damage 20% up. Chain co-op ability, water dragon haste 20% if the user is attuned to water. Increase the dragon gauge fill rate by 20%, benefits the whole team. Dragon Scion 2 replaces the dragon gauge with a divine dragon gauge. Uh, tapping the gauge after it is filled to a certain threshold will allow Tiki to shapeshift, and when in shapeshifting, Tiki will transform into her divine dragon form, regardless of what dragon she is equipped with. By tapping the gauge a second time, or after a certain amount of time has passed, Tiki's shapeshift will end. But as long as sufficient gauge remains, after a set period of time, it will be possible to tap the divine dragon gauge and shapeshift into divine dragon form again. Damage taken will be reduced when in divine dragon form. Burn resistance 100%, Frostbite Punisher 30%. Okay, so I'm also going to show the video because basically what this sounds like, it's going to be hard to imagine, but she's basically a hybrid of the recent new shadow units that we got for Scars of the Syndicate where they get a Dragon Gauge, they have a Dragon Gauge um, um, kind of thing where when they went into Dragon Gauge, they... Um, they basically turned into units themselves. It's, they didn't turn into dragons, they turned into more powerful units and they still had skills, but their still skills became stronger. I'll just show in the video because it shows off better what, uh, what I mean here. But she's basically a hybrid of that because she still turns into a dragon because she is a dragon. Okay. While we're watching this, pay close attention to how she attacks, how much damage she does. A new hero takes the stage. Hi, I'm Tiki. I'd love to play with you all. Oi, Govna. British. Mm -hmm, there's Divine Wings. So there's her in her regular form, 637. Not the greatest, but I think also they're super. I don't think they use very good weapons on this one. Dragon, Dragon Valor. Let's see. Oh, obviously it doesn't deal any attacking damage. So and then she think turns into a super hyper powerful dragon form. Wow, wow, she's dealing a lot of damage <laughs> as in her dragon form. That's, some of those hits are dealing more damage than when she was in, um, as in her regular form. Well, it kind of makes sense. She is in her dragon form. All right, let's go back to Tiki. So yeah, that's kind of what Tiki does. Like I said, she's a hybrid. She's able to turn into dragon. She will take damage in dragon form, though. But it doesn't seem like, at least from it looked like to me, actually, I... I don't know if the Dragon Gauge decreases if you get attacked when you're Dragon Worm, which is something that I don't know if they ever mention here. But I'm not sure if that happens to um, units with the Dragon, because it's been so long since I've used the free-to-play guy from Scars of the Syndicate and I didn't pull for the girl, uh, Belial? 
Bolia, something like that. Um, I don't know. She seems pretty interesting to me. I mean, her from what I understand from Lerp. Let me pull up the Discord messages just to be sure on this. All right, from Lerp. Adventure form looks pretty meh, but in Ted, you're supposed to get her into a dragon drive, uh, dragon drive, dragon drive as soon as possible, because her dra dragon is hitting a lot harder. Basically, uh, her basic attacks do the same amount of damage as her skill one, so immediately you want to get her straight to dragon, uh, into the dragon drive form. In terms of how she would look for for HBH, um, she can definitely be used there. The only downside is that she would want to be the bait. Because of, the, because of the fact that she's a dragon and that she's a dagger, she's always going to be close to the target. And uh, Usually the role of bait has been relegated to, I believe it was Gala Ellie? Yeah, I think it's Gala Ellie because of her um, defense boost and all that stuff. And, well, basically in the in the comp that I use, which is Gala Ellie, two Hunter Cerises, and then um, one um, one healer. I believe it's John, Jane? Jam? Something like that. Um, and then the only another unfortunate thing, which is not really her fault, is the fact that there's no Frostbite Punisher that's um, higher than 4. There's a 4 version of it, but not a 5 yet, so they'll probably work on making one of those pretty soon. Um, other things about her that are very clearly obvious to even me, standard attack damage up by 20% in general to anyone is freaking hilariously nuts. Especially with units that have like the only thing that's a bummer is the fact that the water dragon haste only goes to that the chain co-op ability only goes to water. So when you use her for her co-op ability for another units, they won't get dragon haste. Um, but maybe it won't matter because standard attack damage up by 20% is nutty. It's similar to how uh, Piona's 20% to light damage is nutty, and Krom's uh, attack and defense 10% up to everyone else to everyone is nutty. Um, it's just this flat up, straight up, like, boost. It's like, okay, here, have this. It's like, th even if you don't end up using the unit herself, she's perfectly good for bench. Someone like people who, um, if you would use a comp, like, similar to how our, um, extremely silly comp, they used four people to take on High Brunhilde. If, if every one of us had, um, uh, Tiki on the back row, giving him 20% more uh, chain more uh, basic attack damage. That'd be nuts. Um, the other thing that, that's crazy about this, this is also is applying to any element in general. So if you have any element that heavily relies on their basic attack damage as their main form of like anything, boom, congratulations. Here's 20% more than what you were going to be doing. I don't think that automatically means that she's going to be used on with everyone, because mainly because this chain co-op ability is also kind of a, a hindrance, I feel, for the water dragon haste thing. It's kind of a bummer, honestly. Um, but that's an extremely good co-op ability. There's, like, no denying how good this co-op ability is. Especially with, like, I can't wait to see the damage this does with, like, uh, mana spiraled out units who already have a basic attack upgrade as their final thing that they get. Combined with this, they now deal 20% more damage. Just with their basic attacks, of course. That's that's hilarious. Um, combine that with anyone that also increases the speed of everything. It's it's kind of funny. It's really funny. So I kind of like what they've done with all the Fire Emblem units, which is um, an interesting approach, which makes me feel like they're going to start doing this for a lot of units going forward. Is that the unit skills... Because here's the thing about Tiki's skills, is that they're kind of okay. They're not... They're not like wowing me. Obviously, the ones in her dragon form are better, but they're very basic and straightforward compared to like. Um, this is a very bad comparison because she's already so crazy good. Gal Alex has a very interesting like way that she functions. Even someone like Krom, who like is a lot of skill one spam, and then you use skill two when the <laughs> when the moon is right and every single thing of the gauge is the one hundred percent at full capacity. Um, I don't know, she seems basic in that regards, but it seems fine because, again, I we have to kind of wait and see how a lot of other stuff is going to play out, but I can see her being pretty good. Uh, either she's going to be pretty good, or she's going to be insane, or maybe she'll be bad. I Basically, I've just said nothing for the past five seconds. <laughs> 
Uh, but to end on my part, I do think a lot more lately we're going to be seeing units where who are not the greatest in terms... Not the, not the greatest is a mean way of putting it, but kind of basic in what they do and the, for their skills. But then they make up for it with insane co-op abilities and chain co-op abilities where it's like, well, I, I don't think I'll ever actually use them for a main team thing, but when I'm doing co-op, I definitely want them in the background kind of thing. I don't know. That's my current thoughts about it. I can't wait to see her. I'm going to obviously be doing a video for her. Hope I get her. I got plenty of stuff. Let me tell you that much. I, I'm obviously going to have to start using my Wormite. There's no way for me to get um, her in 28 tickets and 4. So maybe my streak will finally end and I'll be able to actually uh, use Wormite once again. But that's today's video, everyone. Once again, if you ended up liking it, hit that like button. Subscribe to me if you want more Dragalia stuff uh, and videos in general. I play a lot of different games. Um, even though mostly at the moment it's Dragalia and Pokemon. But hey, I call that variety. Something you won't see a whole lot for a lot of other people, I guess. Specifically that focus on, I guess. Just got you. Whatever. Whatever. Okay, everyone. That's the end of today's video. I'll see you guys in the next one. You guys have a good old day. And goodbye.